Coconut Grove was a thriving community even before there was a city of Miami. That is, the Coconut Grove, according to the U.S. Census of 1890, had more than 100 people, while Miami had just one family, the Brickles living on the south bank of the river. How did it come to be this way? Well, you had homesteaders who went back to the 1830s and 40s, and uh, you had uh, former uh, Union physicians who came down here after the Civil War, but it really gets its start. That is the beginnings of modern Coconut Grove with the opening of the Bayview Inn, later called the Peacock Inn in 1882. It attracted a lot of these very creative artistic types, titled counts, writers, what have you. It also attracted, uh, ultimately, a large black Bahamian community who would form another coconut grove known as the Black Grove or today the West Grove. And so you really had a great mix of people there and you had typically the trappings, the institutional trappings of any new community. You had many churches in both the Black and White Grove and the White Grove. You had the beginnings of a school that grew out of a Sunday school in 1889. And you had the first library at the end of the 1890s. You had the women's club, all of these trappings. And it was also picturesque because the grove is on the ridge, and so it's high ground, and it's blessed by so much wonderful subtropical foliage, which makes it very picturesque. And of course, it faces Biscayne Bay. So you had the natural beauty, you had lots of creative people, lots of hardworking people. The people in the White Grove came from different parts of the United States, especially the North, and so their structures were wood frame, sometimes elaborate. The people from the Black Grove came from the Bahamas, and they had the typical Bahamian style, that is, the little wood frame building, sometimes called shotgun housing, where the doorway is asymmetrical, and as the story goes, you could point a shotgun through the doorway down the hallway and hit nobody because every room radiates off of there. The houses were up on blocks for ventilation and to prevent flooding. Uh, you had different festivals in the Black Row that related to the Bahamas. Today's Goombe Festival is not a new festival. There was a Goombe Festival at the turn of the last century in the Black Grove. Um, so you've got these two parallel communities that are very fascinating uh, among a very picturesque ambiance. Now, once you got beyond that core area there, you move further back, that is north and west, you got into the farming area. And what made the farming area develop so well for the Grove was the entry of the Florida East Coast Railway into Coconut Grove in 1903. That is, at today's uh, Douglas Road and US-1, there was a station for the FEC Railway, and that's where farmers would bring their produce to move it to market, as well as pick up supplies there. Coconut Grove was less a tourist community than, say, early in Miami. The people who came there were so enthralled with its beauty and with its activity, you know, creativity, that they stayed there. People typically farm, but some people came down already with deep pockets, so they had sort of like lives of leisure. They could paint, they could write, they could boat. So you had a lot of maritime and farm-related enterprises going on by the people in Coconut Grove, as well as this artistic and literary colony in Coconut Grove by the beginnings of the 1900s. And you begin to see uh, homes, primarily homes, that are along today's Bayshore Drive, stretching from where Miami City Hall is into the center of Coconut Grove. And then as you go down Main Highway, you begin to see another new element by the early 1900s, and that is the beginnings of something that we call Millionaire's Row. A lot of wealthy northerners who love this area for winter vacation spots, build homes along Main Highway, beautiful homes by the 1920s and thereafter. And so you had some of the upper crust of American society living in the Grove too, and they helped to support a lot of the native institutions, the churches, the library, the restaurants, what have you. So it's such a, a cosmopolitan environment there. Peacock Inn sat in today's Peacock Park, which was really formally known as Coconut Grove's Bayfront Park. We all call it Peacock Park. Uh, it was leveled by the hurricane of, 18, of 1926. Uh, the inn was built in 1882 as the Bayview Inn. It was a wood frame building that was later added onto, so it became kind of a tall, large building. It was the community center. For Thanksgiving, there was outdoor dining. For Christmas, they would decorate a pine tree in the nearby woods with Christmas decorations, and they have like a Christmas party around the tree at Christmas time. Uh, a wonderful magnet for people. The Peacock family, who were English, ran the inn until Charles Peacock, the patriarch of the family, became ill at the end of the 1890s. And uh, they sold the inn in the early 1900s. It became a school called Lake Placid School for the next many years. And then the hurricane of 26 came through and just destroyed it. Now, all we have left of the inn is not the inn, but we have Going back to photographs of the end of the 1880s, there were two at that time pretty mature oak trees that stand like this in front of the end. The end is just behind them or just west of them. 
those two oak trees are still standing in Peacock Park. It was advantageous for people to live on the ridge because of the, the problem of flooding. You couldn't live inland in those days, so everybody lived along the bay. The Peacock Inn in Coconut Grove was probably the most attractive of all of those communities because Coconut Grove was a combination of a homestead community where home, simple, humble homesteaders farm, as well as these artsy, creative people, including two titled counts were there. Coconut Grove was never a port. There was a wharf uh, or sort of a deck that stretched out from the edge of the Peacock Inn, Bay's Edge, out into the water. We have photographs of Miccosukees using dugout canoes from up there only because there's no deep water channel there. And Mr. Flagler, Henry Flagler, who brought his railroad to Miami, created the harbor where today's Bicentennial Park is. And that's where that deep water channel is. So it couldn't become a major port because the bay is so shallow there. It did have freshwater springs bubbling up above water level until they started draining the Everglades in the, in the early 1900s. But the bay is only three and four and five feet in some areas around there. So you could not hope to have a port there. One of my favorite structures in Coconut Grove would be the Coconut Grove Playhouse, which is diagonally across the street on Main Highway from uh, the Barnacle. Coconut Grove Playhouse was designed by my favorite architectural firm during the boom, and that was Keenel and Elliott out of Pittsburgh and Miami. They designed and built the Coconut Grove Playhouse in 1926. But it didn't open when it was supposed to because the hurricane of 26 came through and did such damage to it. It opened in 1927 as a moving picture theater. In World War II, it served as a naval officer training area. And then after the war in 1954, a man named George Engel came in, bought a lot of properties in Coconut Grove, and including the Playhouse, closed it for two years, converted it from a motion picture theater into live theater. It opened in 1956 as the Playhouse, and it's one of the most famous playhouses in the southern United States. Another favorite structure of mine is today's Miami City Hall, which is in Coconut Grove. It was built by Pan American Airways, completed in 1934 as their terminal. They had these great seaplanes that took off and landed on the bay behind today's City Hall, then the Pan Am Terminal, uh, between the time it opened in the early 1930s and World War II. And uh, after the war, Pan Am didn't need that anymore, weren't using seaplanes anymore for their operations, so they sold it to the city of Miami, which moved into it in 1954 as City Hall. It's a beautiful Art Deco style building. It's kind of ironic that Coconut Grove, which predates Miami in terms of a community, is actually part of Miami. It was annexed to the city of Miami against its will in 1925, and that's really, I think, the, the, the whole thing here. It stands apart from Miami even now because it has a bohemian energy to it that really kind of sets it apart from most other areas of Miami-Dade County.